Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about genetic diagrams. I'm going to show you how to do a Punnett square, I'm going to show you how to do a monohybrid cross, and we're going to see how sex is determined by using a Punnett square. Okay, so um, let's imagine first of all we have two people that are going to have a baby. Here we have dad, and he has that genotype of two little bees, and we have mum, and she has this genotype of one big bee and one little bee. So there's mum. So just a reminder about what this means. The big B, the capital B, is the gene for brown eyes, and it is dominant. You can tell that it's dominant because it's a capital letter. And there's the little b, which stands for blue eyes. Remember, if it's recessive, we need two of those particular alleles in order to have that characteristic. Okay, so what a Punnett square, the whole point of a Punnett square is to determine what the percentage chance is of the baby either having blue eyes or brown eyes. Now, when, uh, when the dad, he produces sperm cells, there's a 50% chance that that allele will be in a sperm cell, and there's a 50% chance that that one will be. So, there's a 50% chance he'll produce that, and a 50% chance he'll produce that. Now, because mum is heterozygous, she has one of each type of allele, there's a 50% chance that her egg cells will contain that B, the dominant allele, and a 50% chance that it, will, that it will contain that allele, that recessive allele. So all we need to do now to complete the Punnett square is we see the combinations of these different gametes. So if this sperm cell joins with that egg cell, we're going to have big B, little b. If this one joins with that one, we're going to have little b, little b. If this one joins with that one, we're going to have big B, little b. And if that one joins with that one, we're going to have little b, little b. So, which ones are brown eyes? So this child here, because they have that dominant allele for brown eyes, they'd have brown eyes. This child would have brown eyes. This one would have blue eyes. This one would have blue eyes. So what's the percentage chance that they have blue eyes? It's a 50% chance of blue eyes. Please notice, guys, you always use the same letter. Even if, let's say, this was, um, if these didn't start with the same letter, these always do. So it's always the capital of one letter and the lowercase of the same letter. Now, a monohybrid cross shows exactly the same thing. So let's imagine we're dealing with, this time, someone with cystic fibrosis. So cystic fibrosis is a recessive disorder. If someone has that genotype, it means that they are a carrier of cystic fibrosis, meaning they don't have it themselves, but they can pass it on. If they have two recessive alleles, they have cystic fibrosis. So let's imagine, let's imagine we have two parents, dad and mum. Now these two genotypes, let's say dad and mum, are both carriers. So neither of them have cystic fibrosis, but both of them have that recessive allele that carry cystic fibrosis that could be passed on to the next generation. So let's just have a quick think. The first thing that you need to do is you need to show the different gametes that would be produced. So 50% of dad's gametes are going to have that C, the capital one, and 50% are going to have that recessive allele, the lowercase one. Please notice if you're using the same letter, make it really clear uh, which one's capital, which one's um, lowercase. I mean, not the same letter, but if they look the same. So the capital C and the lowercase C, we need to really make sure they're different sizes. Okay, same with mum. So her two different gametes would be this and this. So what we now need to do is show the different combinations of fertilisation. So first of all, if that sperm joins with that egg there, so if that sperm joined with that egg there, we'd have this zygote being formed. This, however, this sperm could also form, uh, go with that egg. So the next thing in the combination would be that with that, which would form big C, little c. So this person would be a carrier. That's looked at both permutations or both kind of combinations with dads with that particular sperm. What about if they'd produce that sperm? So instead, we'd see that sperm mixing with that egg there, so we're fertilizing that egg there. So we'd have big C, little c. And finally, we could have this one 
joining with this one to make little c, little c. So let's just quickly think about the offspring here. So this first person doesn't have cystic fibrosis at all. These two here are carriers, which mean they don't have it, but they could pass it on. And finally, the person on the end has cystic fibrosis. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more thing, which is just how sex can be determined by using a Punnett square as well. So um, men, all men have the chromosomes um, XX. So they have two X chromosomes. On the 23rd chromosome, they're both X's. Whereas women, women's chromosomes, they have an X and a Y chromosome. Now, the Y chromosome is dominant, which means we only need one Y chromosome in order for this person, for, in order for the offspring to be a baby. Uh, to be a baby, to be a woman, to be female. So, let's quickly um, have a look at the Punnett square. So, again, let's think about this right now. So, when the man is producing sex cells, there's a 50% chance it'll have that X chromosome in and a 50% chance it'll have that X chromosome in. When a woman is producing X cells, there's a 50% chance it'll have that X in and there's a 50% chance it'll have that Y in there. Oh, wait a minute, sorry, I just do that in that colour, makes it a bit easier, okay? So, when we look at the Punnett square, this X with this X, that would be male. This X with this X, that would be male. This X with this Y, that would be female. And this X with this Y, that would be female. So this is why there's always a 50% chance. So 50% chance of being male and 50% chance of being female. Because always reproducing is between a man and a woman. So we'll always have this Punnett square happening. So that's why there's always a 50% chance of the baby being a boy, 50% chance of the baby being a girl. Thank you.